wax. Oh my god, I have a bit of wax. Totally. Are you ready? Yes. Focus everyone's energy. <laughs> yeah, it's being started. Yay! Yes! Okay, so. We're going live. Yes. Emily, you're in the picture. People see you now. Oh, oh wait, no, it's fine. Here we go. Emily, there we go. So, do I just go for it? Oh, oh it's me. Yeah, sure. Oh, so, I was yeah. I, I meant to introduce you guys, but hey, go for it. Uh, this yeah. is the Dream Binding yeah, you, panel. You go, you go, you go. All right, you guys, you're watching the Dream Binding panel. Here are my lustrous guests. And let's start things off with introductions. Here's Emily Hare. <laughs> now go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Emily. I'm in the UK at the moment. And uh, yeah, I work in watercolours. I made a book called Strange Hollow, which some of you might have seen about three years ago. And uh, yeah, I will be talking about that. Next up, Ellis. Hello. Um, my name is CCJ Ellis, and I'm an illustrator from Wales in the UK. Um, and I've written a book called Welsh Monsters and Mythical Beasts. I don't have the finished book because it's not finished yet, <laughs> but I do have the internal pages. So, yay! <laughs> and that's, that's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Ellis, continue. Yeah, my name is Iris Kubitz. I'm from the Netherlands. They did my book, Fairies of the Fault Lines, um, released three years ago through Kickstarter, completely sold out, and currently working on new artwork for a reprint, which is going to be published soon. I guess. Yeah, soon. But yeah, that's me. Last but not least, Nata. Uh, you all came very prepared. I should have brought a book, but I don't have it with me, but you can see it online. I haven't. Um, um, oh, you have it. Oh, Amazing. Okay. See? Um, uh, well, my name is Natasha mm. Ilinchic. Um, I'm an artist and illustrator based in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, that's my latest book, A Companion of Witches. It's um, an art book that features... Um, stories, portraits of witches from across the world in various historical settings. Um, it was published almost two years ago now, uh, actually kickstarted and then published last year, um, working on a second reprint now, uh, amidst of all this chaos. Um, and I'm working on a new book called Shapeshifters now, which will be part of a duology. Um, and we'll focus on the folklore of shapeshifters around the world and different cultures. Mm. That sounds cool. Okay, <clears throat> I think we're all best friends now, so I can ask yeah. you something very important, because I've been meaning to do my very own book, like a personal project just for me and other people, and I want to know how did you find out what subject you wanted to work on? You know, what sparked that? inspiration that made you go yeah i'm gonna do that book and emily i already see you on my screen so why don't you tell me something about that um but it, mine kind of started by accident i didn't initially <clears throat> excuse me i didn't initially want to make a book although in the back of my mind i thought it'd be really nice to make a book one day but my but strange hollow um started with me trying to be more consistent with my painting so i thought if I have a theme or a place that I'm inhabiting, um, I thought, oh, let's do uh, a, an enchanted forest um, and try and fill it with creatures and people and stuff and, and, and see what happens because normally my attention span is very short and I want to do lots of different things and they're not necessarily connected. They might be sort of different folklore stories or um, just pretty much anything that catches my attention. So focusing on just one thing, or at least one one world, I suppose, um, really helped. And also, I restricted myself to watercolours, so um, that kind of helped me stick to this, this one place. And, and in doing that, I started, uh, all these creatures started appearing, and then it, it took on a life of its own, and then ended up becoming a book. So that's that's kind of how mine started, and, and uh, I'm, I'm working on the second book now, which is going to be quite. I mean, it's going to be 
same place, but um, yeah, I've learned a lot in the last three years. So, yeah. You also did one about witches, didn't you? I did, yes. I did one called uh, Cauldron. <laughs> I forgot what it was called then. Yeah, that was two years ago now. So that was the second book I did. Um, and that was, I initially wanted it to be quite dark, but the reality is I don't really do dark that well. <laughs> or at least I don't naturally, I don't, when I try and do something dark, it usually ends up a bit funny too, or maybe a bit cute. So um, I need to c concentrate, or I'm, I'm accepting the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm into the, the silly stuff more than that. Uh, I like looking at the dark stuff, but uh, yeah, I was a bit confused because I thought, oh, well, I like looking at that. So um, yeah, I, I need to accept that I am, uh, I like the silly things. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you do it really well. Well, thank you. We love the silly things. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do we need silly things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if it makes me laugh when I'm painting it, I know something's something right. Something's happening. That's that's the right uh, going down yeah, the right path. It's what people need now. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely and it's good that you're listening to that voice as well, because as you say, there is such a Start contrast sometimes between um, between what you enjoy and um, yeah. looking at and what you actually enjoy creating and yeah, yeah sometimes you wouldn't think about that. I didn't realise that that I was because I was really and even with with cauldron actually it was a real problem because I was like oh, it's going to be really dark <laughs> and it just and, and I even I did that with strange hollow I was like yeah it's going to be quite a dark spooky enchanted forest but it's not although the, the more recent stuff I've done is. A little bit darker um, working on the new book but it's it, it's not I don't know it just doesn't it doesn't come out the way or, or I, I thought I the stuff that I liked or the art that I like looking at because it's quite dark I thought well that's obviously what I like doing as well but it, it turns out not at all so sometimes I like doing it but, you know, not all the time I think that, that's your personality just shining through your art yeah, it's just the gurning, yeah. So, but I think a lot of you do slightly darker artwork sometimes, but then focus on on more uplifting or just weird and strange things like ears. Your your fairies, you have some dark ones, but oh, yeah, you definitely. haven't only met those. You also have met some very funny little fellows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and um, in my case, um, I didn't even know what I was going to do when I started on this this, this road. Um, I never set out to do a book, actually. Um, I just started doing daily sketches, and things evolved from just joining into in with a hashtag on Instagram, trying to create <coughs> art because I wanted to create art, and um, I... That, that was 2016, I was in this pretty rough time. Um, I didn't have any job. Um, I was overworked uh, from the day job, and I basically, I, I, I pretty much gave up on art, which is one of the worst oh. things to do when you <clears throat> fall out of love with art, because you're try I was trying so hard to fit in Mm. in what I thought that people wanted to see from me. Yeah. And I, it, it just, it, it's like squeezing your butt into this size zero pen when you're up, you know, not a size zero. <laughs> it people, I mean, come, come for this key. Um, mm. So I started doing uh, hashtags like Junfei and Mermaid, and things just went from there. And all of a sudden, I had stories to tell. I was posting daily. People were asking me, what are you going to do with this? I was like, yeah. Maybe I can do a book or something, because all these creatures were coming from this world. I I slowly be began naming the fault lines, and um, yeah, that went a bit crazy. <laughs> so I was thinking it would, you know, three hundred books maybe, and uh, that you know that was twenty five hundred, which is <laughs> weird. Yeah, and, and it, I, you know, being an artist, being a fantasy artist, I got in the Netherlands, I got the, oh, you're a fantasy artist, you must draw fairies. Mm -hmm. No, I don't draw fairies, no. 
because you got that stigma um, yeah. that you paint pink fairies with cute sparkly things. <laughs> I don't. I don't. So I never set out to do fairies and until the fairies decided that I should be doing fairies and then fairies they chose you. Yeah, yeah. And um it's so diverse. It's I have dark dark darkness in there, but I, I'm a firm believer that without darkness there is no light and without light mm-hmm. there's you know, you have to have that balance. Mm-hmm. And fairies are very um nature. Nature is beautiful and horrendous at the same time and I think that's interesting to yeah show so for me that that fun and cute and cutesy is important but the darkness can be beautiful as well so yeah, I like how your fairies kind of embody nature quite literally like yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. thank you I think that's some that's a contrast we also see with witches because you have like like always you have these white witches and the the dark witches and I feel like mm. with Nata your your book it, it just has this this the your approach of a historian you know when it comes mm. to witchcraft and yeah I think I I completely got rid of the whole distinction between white witches and black witches because I I just don't believe in it. Um, in the same way that I don't believe that there is good and evil in nature, there is just nature. And then, yeah, it's it's a different perspective on it. Uh, but yeah, you're right about um, my book having a more historical perspective, I guess. Um, and I've always been passionate about things like women's history and paganism, earth spirituality, stuff like that. And these are all topics that came naturally to me to study, to research. And then when I was in a university, I had the opportunity to actually research them with proper resources. So to actually go and find good, reliable resources for the stuff that I was interested in. Um, and I got the idea for my book in 2016, I think. I was in Bosnia. I was doing some um, anthropological field work there. Um, I was interviewing these old, old women who live in the rural highlands of Bosnia, um, and they all have these traditional tattoos on their um, hands and arms, and I was researching the origins, the pre-Christian origins of these tattoos. Um, and I, I collected so many stories from these women that uh, you know, survived not one but two wars, and there were some quite crazy, um, crazy stories there. So I started thinking, you know, if I had the chance to speak to the women of the past, and like, what stories would they tell me? And if I had the chance to speak to the wise women of the past, those um, who were familiar with a wider concept of the world, so um, you know, with the forces that are beyond the material world then what kind of stories would they tell me? And it just kind of started fitting together. um, And I started writing these stories and painting these portraits to then collect them in a book. So, Alice, I I think you you did a lot of the work you did was about um, preserving your Welsh heritage. And you did also a lot of research on that. Yeah, well, again, like like what, what... a lot of the others have said, I didn't actually set out originally to do a book. What I originally started doing was um, I was granted an opportunity to do an exhibition in Oriel Ernest Mon, which is a a gallery on Anglesey in North Wales. Um, And I was going to be exhibiting sculptures and pictures that, you know, illustrations that I'd done on Welsh mythical creatures. Um, And while I was doing the exhibition, it just kind of kept spiraling into a bigger and bigger project and I found that there were so many different mythical creatures the more digging I did the more I found and I thought and I also found that there wasn't actually anything that existed already so like saying Welsh gift shops and the castles and stuff there was no books that really went into Welsh mythology there's the Mabinogion and, and there's a couple of books but there wasn't any kind of illustrated books um, and me and my partner had recently been to Iceland, um, and while we were in Iceland, we 
saw loads and loads of books in the gift shops about Icelandic mythology and they were all beautifully illustrated and I just thought how come we don't have anything like this in Wales um, so I thought well I could do it someone's got to do it so I thought I could I could do it <laughs> so I sort of set out to try and get as much as I could and think could I do a book could I could I get enough material for this um, and so I, I got a fairly decent amount of material at the end of the exhibition and I decided to kickstart a book and just see how it would go um, and it went way it way beyond what I thought it was going to I thought I'd go to get like a few backers and it might make its goal but it, it spiralled a bit out of control <laughs> and I was like oh okay so people are really interested and there's lots of people with Welsh heritage from all over the world who, who wanted to know more about these creatures um, because we only really know about the Welsh dragon but a lot of people don't know about all the other mythological creatures there are in Welsh mythology and because there's nothing that documented it I thought okay um, and it did really well on Kickstarter so then I kind of I, I finished um, producing the book but then people kept sending in more and more legends and um, so I thought well oh, there's more there's so much here I could literally expand the book I could make it bigger so I decided okay and then I, I worked on it for a while added more and more creatures that people have been sending in to me and researching and, and finding more stuff and just filled up and I thought oh I've got enough here for another book so I decided to make a bigger version <laughs> and I kick-started that again and that was about a year and a half ago and that did even better on Kickstarter <laughs> and so so basically for the last year and a half I've been putting this book together getting it finished ready um, to, to send out to backers but while all that was going on I also, thanks to Iris, I got contacted by a publisher, um, and now the book is being published. Oh, <laughs> so, which is really, <laughs> which is really surprising. I wasn't expecting <clears throat> any of this to happen. To be honest, I wasn't expecting there to be as much interest in Welsh mythology, but because it's my background and my heritage, it's really exciting to see that being celebrated and, and hopefully being preserved as well. So, no, that's that's great to hear. Uh, but. And I think I got an idea now what I want to do for my book. I'm thinking mermaids, maybe, you know, but I, I, yeah, I, I'd love to, but I don't, you know, I still have to do like all the work and I kind of need a bit of motivation. I've heard some great success stories from you now, Alice, but I want you guys to tell me what's the most exciting thing about working on a book, you know, what lets you get out of bed every day and go, book. I'll get you done. <laughs> Having this in your hand. <laughs> yes. This. The finished product. The finished product. <laughs> All the emails you get from people who say that they love it. Yeah. Um, you know, that, you know. Yeah. That when someone comments and, say, and says how much they enjoyed it or. Yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah, I'm actually starting to think of collecting all the lovely messages that I got. In a little thing, so I can look at it in dark times when I'm sad. Oh. I can just yeah. you know, read, you know, see the impact that my book has had on yeah, people. Definitely. Yeah, a friend of mine is a teacher, and he um, used it in his class with his kids. Um, to I can't remember what he was teaching <laughs> from now, but um, yeah, he said the kids really loved it, and they were they were all doing they might have been painting. But he's not, he's not an art teacher, but um, I think they're about seven or eight, the age group. Yeah, um, and it's really lovely to hear, hear people using them. And, and, and it, it, doesn't, it seems to be, um, you know, adults and kids alike. Because I know my stuff, there's, there's definitely lots of very kid-friendly mm. stuff in it. But I remember when I was, when it, the, the Kickstarter went live, there was endless questions. Is this okay for one-year-olds or four-year-olds or whatever. In fact, I don't know. It depends on your parenting. Um, <laughs> there's a disclaimer in my book. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's a disclaimer in my book because there's nudity in some of these pieces. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, it's fairies. They don't cover up. Who cares? No. Okay. Fairies don't care. No. And, uh, but it, it's important. It's so important um, to have that wall with the happiness things. It's, it's when you get messages from people who say that 
they're in their 60s and they say, you gave me the, my childhood back. And Aww, yeah. Wow. It's like, I need a moment to just, like, having that Kickstarter being a success is amazing. And having people who you have in high regard tweet about it or back it or talk about it or even support it. Um, like Brian Trout did with mine um, when he wrote the, the, the intro for it. That's amazing, but it's if your work makes a difference in somebody's life. Mm. I mean, that's that's all you for me. That's mm. the highest. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. That's that. that just some of the comments um, that I've had people send is just. Yeah, I, c I can't believe it's about something that I've made. Yeah. And that, that, like you're saying, you know, uh, bringing their childhood back, I get that a lot as well. Oh, this reminds me of books I looked at when I was a kid or whatever. And I just, that's why I'm, I mean, I think I, I'm trying to capture that feeling that I used to have when I looked at um, fancy books, when I was, or rather fairy tale books, which were illustrated as a kid. Um, I kind of, I really believe that it was possible that there were fairies or um, monsters or you know there were things under the bed or whatever it was I, I you know when you're yet when you're that young you, you don't you, you still think it's possible um, and I want that I want to try and capture that for myself but also obviously inadvertently for everyone else as well but you know that that magical feeling of, oh maybe that's possible oh, yeah yeah that but just maybe what it yeah 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 I love it yeah it's good I've always said, like, um, to look at the world with extraordinary eyes. Like, look at the ordinary with extraordinary eyes. So look at a stone and see something different. Look at a tree and see something, uh, see a talking tree or, you know. So all of a sudden, this, this world around you turns into a magical place where you can, you know, go on holiday in your backyard. It's now yeah, we all need that now. It's good now. <laughs> yeah. I feel so lucky to have a garden at the moment. Yeah. I'm I'm envying everyone who has a garden right now. Oh. You've got some nice plants it's, in the background. Yeah, it goes yeah. just behind it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a little jungle. Okay. So nobody wants to talk about how invigorating the process of painting is, just slapping watercolour all over your face and fingers. <laughs> I see. That's always fun. Yeah, yeah. okay. But I see I got to be done to really reap the rewards of, of having done oh, yeah, a book. You know, yeah, yeah, you know. I, don't, you I can't get around that one. Okay. The road to the rewards is, is interesting as well. That's, that's mm. part of the joy. That's part of the fun. Um, but when you want to do a Kickstarter, for instance, what we've all done, um, just make sure that before you run a Kickstarter, you've actually finished about 80% of the work. Because yeah. yeah, it'll be stressful if I you have to do same. that after the Kickstarter's done. It's like, that's that's not yeah. a good mind space to be in. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's unpredictable. Like, there are going to be delays that you don't have control over. So even if mm -hmm. you're completely on point on your schedule someone else is not going to be <laughs> yeah. most definitely yeah that's exactly what happened to me because uh well i ended up in a car accident <laughs> um and i luckily it wasn't anything serious i just had really bad whiplash but it meant that i couldn't draw for quite a while so that delayed the project and now yeah. obviously with the with the current pandemic <laughs> that's uh, putting things behind schedule as well so yeah. I think I'd definitely give yourself way more time and have a majority of the work finished because that, yeah. I think, with my mistake, is about 40% of the work was was unfinished and I needed to, to use the project to fund finishing the book in the first place. Yeah. Which is, that's that's a, a um, not an unusual thing for people to use, yeah. do with Kickstarter. So, yeah, I mean, certainly with my, with, with the second Strange Holler book, I'm, I'm going to try and be 90% done. Yeah, because um, um, obviously after that, you know, you might have the old extra thing because of the Kickstarter to do. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't want to. <coughs> Unless they have the illustrations done, that's yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, I made a, a, a most of my stuff done 
but because the Kickstarts are doing so well, I ended up having to do 48 pages extra, <laughs> which meant 48 pages of wow. other stories that, you know, you're still working on. Um, yeah. That was that was kind of stressful, but um, very important when you're running a Kickstarter is always be open and honest in communication towards your backers. Mm-hmm. Just let them know why there's delays. Uh, show them what you're doing. Just don't hide out and, and go sit in a corner and be all, oh, I'm, I'm a month late, I'm a month late. I mean, you know, yeah. yes, it feels like getting having a baby. Mm. Totally. Um, but it's it's if you're open and honest towards your backers, they will understand. And sure, there's one or two people that just will never understand, and you'll have to deal with that as well. Because you know, yeah, that happens. Um, I think that's the thing I've been most grateful for is, is people being incredibly understanding. Yeah, yeah. I and think most people are, and yeah. like they, especially if you keep them informed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, they, they, Literally they, any small change, there's been an update saying this is what's happening now. Yeah. Well, it's, you're also taking them on a journey of the creation of this book. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's how I uh, felt when I created my book. Is um, um, I've been a graphic designer for 16 years, so I've designed a lot of books in my life, and I know mm-hmm. exactly what you can do with books and 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 um, the finishes of them. And I wanted to show people like what's the quality of a really nice quality book and how important is that. And um, so I, I basically took them on that journey of creating a book and taking them with me to uh, the printers and having them see the actual press that printed the book. So they saw that those pages roll off the press. Oh, I loved that. Yeah. It it's it's all of a sudden that piece of magic um, is explained, it, but it's mm. still magic, you know. Yeah. And they're part of the whole journey because they made this without them. I couldn't have done any of this. Yeah. So it's <clears throat> with them I do this, and because of them I can do this. Yeah, it's good you've got that close relationship with them. I think it's very important to to have that or to cultivate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people love seeing the behind the scenes as well, you know. It's not yeah. just the painting and uh, just the artwork, but, you know, all other practicalities of an artist's life sometimes. Yeah. The pyjamas. The damn yeah. dishes. <laughs> okay. You guys have any more splendid advice for me? Or, or do I just have to get to my drawing board now and, and start? Do it. <laughs> just just start. Make just sure you finish it. <laughs> okay. Be okay, a mermaid and jump in. Yeah. I'll, I'll do just it. Lots uh, and lots of thumbnails, lots of planning. I, I find I find that that was an important part of designing the book was whenever I was planning how a page was going to work, I would sort of design thumbnails, loads and loads of thumbnails to try and get an idea for how each page would end up looking and that took quite a lot and that's why I ended up making like an additional sketchbook which went with the project because then people could have that added extra so they could see how the book was made so they can they can open that and see all the concept sketches and yeah yeah. so all the sketches that didn't make it into the final book are in the sketchbook I didn't plan for uh, anything actually you know things happen same. <laughs> I feel very unprofessional. I was like, uh, yeah, uh, all of a sudden. Poof. I wish I could do that. I wish I could just, just draw straight I, on. I mean, I don't know if you want to do that because it's, it can be very like chaotic and like paper. My table now is very clean because, you know, I had to get rid of all the NDA projects. So I can't quite show any of this. But normally it's, it's pretty pretty cool of things and it's it's mess everywhere. And I think you can see that in your book as well. There is um, like yeah. more organic it feels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was Whereas trying... I think that my book was a bit the opposite. Like it's very structured. Yeah. You know, it's, it's every different. which has four pages. It's very 
tidy in a way. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I like to. I'm very. I'm a little bit too precise. I think sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm already getting some questions from the very precious audience and mm -hmm. several people have been asking about designing your books. Of course, it is, you're a book designer. You could yeah. do all this stuff by yourself. You, you're a pro in that matter, but the others, yeah. you're, you're not as far as I know. How did you handle designing your books? Did you get any help? Or did you partner with a designer, maybe? Or did you have to just learn it? Or just did you just wing it? You know, just magic it all into the world? Honestly, I think that in my case, I like books are my comfort zone. They're where I go uh, if I'm stressed out. It's what I like to hoard. It's, you know, I love books and I love beautiful books. So I've always been collecting um, art books, stuff like that. Um, and I think it was just a process of looking through how other people achieved certain um, effects in the design of the book, and then me trying to replicate a certain um, a certain thing as well. I think that part of it was also um, writing um, my thesis, so having to learn how to format that properly and. Um, like in academic writing, things can be quite fiddly when it comes to footnotes, all these things. Um, so I think that, yeah, part of it was, was academic writing. Part of it was just me loving books and observing how other people um, just just do layouts and yeah. these um, things successfully. Yeah, I definitely looked through the art books that I had just to, to, for inspiration for mine. But yeah. I definitely, um, I mean... People that have made books will be able to see from my book that I didn't know what I was doing when I made it. But um, you know, things like, I used InDesign um, for the layout, but I didn't know, I didn't really know how to use it like properly. I didn't know all the sort of um, the helpful bits. I mean, it was very much um, just you know trying to make it look right, you know, sort of eyeing it up rather than knowing how to do it properly. Um, but yeah, now that I'm coming up to, to the, the second of the books, I'm definitely going to approach it slightly differently and uh, be a bit more precise, hopefully, yeah. with mine. This, this, ac with oh, this actually leads into the next question. With your next book, what, what would you try to do differently or was there any problem you got run into so that now you, that you're wiser, you, so you'd many. be mindful of? <laughs> oh, oh. I wrote no one, and that's specifically for Kickstarters. Mm -hmm. Never promise the forty if first forty eight hours after launch to do a free sketch in a book. <laughs> Never do yeah. that, or cap the amount of sketches. Yeah, yeah. so many sketches. So many sketches. Seven hundred <laughs> people. Seven hundred. <gasps> Two months. That's, that's insane. Yeah, no. Yeah. Hey, I did it! I did it! You did it! That was what? amazing. <laughs> you did it, you did it, and it was amazing, but yeah, probably something yeah. to think it's, about. It's not the smartest thing to do, because it's not the smartest thing to do. It's insane. Just throwing that out there. Golden nugget of wisdom. <laughs> and I will sip my drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Alice, is there anything later. you learned? Also, we just want you to see you drink your water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna reiterate and say, give yourself way longer of a of a of a time scale than you think you need, because yeah. you the the unexpected things that life throws at you. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's definitely it's definitely worth giving yourself a much longer deadline. Yeah. So if if you if you say to everyone, or if you think it'll take you three months after after the end of the year, yeah. so give yourself five months. Yeah. Well, Six longer, months. I'd say. <laughs> Well, it depends, yeah. how, it depends how finished you are when you when you do the kick. Because yeah. I, for me, I oh. usually give them three months, but that's because, or well, certainly with the books I've done since Strange Hollow, I've had much more finished, so yeah, there's not been a big waste in time. Yeah, yeah. definitely having a lot of the work finished is a, is mm. a big, big thing. Yeah. I'd like to add one more, um, and that goes back to the first mm. question about the design. If you don't feel comfortable designing a book, 
ask help in mm. every section of your, what you're doing. Ask help because um, treat this as the book you want to create, the best book ever. And if you're not comfortable with designing, and there's as a designer, I, I see a lot of books, um, and I'm like, ah, oh, that font, you should have used a different typeface because it's not working for your uh, look and feel of your whole book. So ask help, ask uh, people who know what they're talking about. And if that means putting a, like, um, how do you call that? Like when you're factoring cost of having a designer on board, do that because it's so important. You don't want to have this book that's eh, could have been better. No, you mm. want it like this is actually the best I could do. Because um, it's not worth it to have a book that's like, oh, I should have done this. Mm, I should yeah, have I got... chosen a different font, or I should have, mm. you know. If I see so often that people have um, too broad a um, like text, text. Uh, I'm completely out of those for words. Um, their lines are too long, their sentences are too long, and it's just your eye just... And it's too close to the yeah. end. Yeah. yeah, for instance, and it's such a shame. Mm. I got incredibly lucky because Iris quite literally looked through... You, I, I owe you big time, Iris. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's what we do, we help each through. other. Yeah, you looked through my book and you said, I'll oh, bring the text in a little bit more, try it, try a slightly simpler font, and... And yeah, you helped me out with the cover design as well, so that was a, a huge, huge I help. <laughs> I think that's a good point. I mean, we already have, as, as freelance artists, you already have, like, what, 10 different jobs. You know, you have to be your own accountant, you have to be, um, you know, your, your own legal team, you're, you have to paint everything, write everything. So if you have to be your own designer as well and you're not comfortable with it, then yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's okay to delegate. It's okay to ask for help. Yeah. And that's not just for design wise. It's it's for every section of this. You could ask for help. Uh, ask help with packaging. Please do it for the love of God. Ask help. <laughs> Have a packaging party, or you know all that kind of stuff. It is okay to ask people to help you um, to make this work because you don't have to do it all alone. Yeah, I, I couldn't have done the, the graphic design. My, luckily, my sister's a graphic designer, um, Fleur Ellis, and she, she literally did all of the layout and everything for me because <laughs> there's no way. I just I just don't have an eye for it. So and I really, I've learned a lot doing this project. I've learned a lot, but I still really struggle with typography and page layouts and things. So It's, it's important to know your strengths and your weaknesses, yeah. and it's your calling card. It's, it's this book you have is a calling card. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have the, the uh, publisher saying yes to a deal mm -hmm. if that was, you know, a mad book. Mm -hmm. They love the book. And she got the deal. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I, I had another problem. Like, my problem was with the writing. So, uh, initially, I wrote the whole book in Italian because um, that's my native language. Um, and then I had to, and this was probably a bad call. It was me thinking, if I write in Italian, I will have a wider vocabulary, and then I can just translate that into English, and I'll be okay. But I didn't take into account that even syntax between the two languages varies quite drastically. Um, so when it came to the editing and the translation, uh, my partner was a huge help. Um, he's a writer, so he knew exactly what to do, what was wrong with you know, each bit that I was struggling with. So there was a lot of editing, a lot of, I think we went through the whole text at least seven times. <laughs> uh, I knew it by heart by the end, I was so sick of it. <laughs> but yeah, the a good point yeah. by the way, getting an editor if it's yeah. not a native language or if you're not a writer, just get an editor. Yeah, you know, I have. Pay, I'm, pay I'm, for somebody. I'm, yeah. Really good. Okay, thank you so much. I think there's one last question to finish this up, and I think it's really, really lovely. Somebody asked uh, for your favorite childhood books, not not children's books, but mm. the books that really inspired you when you were younger, because mm. you mentioned that before, that this is something you want to recapture, and so I think it would be really nice 
if you could all I can I can go and grab mine, so I'll do that once. Do it, it. do oh. it, grab them. Oh grab them. Um uh, let's see. I don't know downstairs. downstairs. <laughs> if you all have some we can grab them and then compare. I don't I don't have mine here, but I can tell you it was a okay. big big children's encyclopedia uh, when I was a kid and it had all these wonderfully vintage uh, illustrations done in watercolor and gouache and tempera, you know. Um, it had a very classical 60s feeling to it. Um, I think that was my favorite book as a kid. I think for me, I, I'm a massive Tolkien nerd. So, and I remember when I was eight years old, I was reading the, the, the Hobbit over and over and over again. And I remember finding Tolkien's illustrations. And uh, I just, even though he wasn't like a, he wasn't a professional artist, I still really appreciated all the detail he put into things and how whimsical it looked. Um, and so I used to just sort of copy those. And that's what sort of started me off, I think. And especially drawing dragons, literally anything, anything with dragons was a huge, was a huge thing for me <laughs> as a kid. I used to have, you know, all those like encyclopedia or dinosaurs kind of things, and, and they had all the pictures yeah. and the illustrations. I tried drawing those. Um, and does anyone remember the book Dragonology? I think it was called. Yeah, I had that. I, who was that by? I, that, I loved that book. It was absolutely amazing. I loved the illustrations inside it. But they were kind of like those those cross-hatched kind of illustrations, and that inspired me a lot. I still do that to this day with the cross-hatching. I've got, I've got a book here. That this is, I don't know how old, hang on, let me just see how old this is. But this, um, I was, I've always been obsessed with horses. And so this has some really cool horses in it. This was 1985, so I would have been nine. And oh, the cover, is it back to front for you guys? No, it's good. No, no. Okay. Uh, so it's Russian mythology. And it's really, it's just got a real, I don't know, it's got a, a, a different vibe to other, other books I had. And like really cool horses. I remember drawing this horse like, a million times with a big mane. Um, you, you need to do, do a uh, tribute of that one. A what? A tribute? A tribute. Yeah. To your version, that would be wonderful. Well, I, have, I do, I, I have got a plan for doing magical horses because I do like painting horses. Oh, so. magical horse book. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot. <laughs> Slept near the start. Oh, yeah. I, All I, the legs. Oh, no. All the legs, yeah. Well, yeah. there's a lot of mythology surrounding horses, so I think you would have, you know, a good solid base to start that. Yeah, yeah. So horses on the, on are the so myth. hard to draw. Yeah. Well, they are. I would, I would never draw. I mean, I just muscles. I just worked on a on a children's book called The uh, Legend of the First Unicorn, and that came out um, a couple of months back, and that was my first time like properly having to draw horses, like mm -hmm. a lot of horses, and I'm not sure I would do it again, but I know how to draw a horse now. <laughs> it's just so hard. It's good. It's how does it work? Just, yeah, it just clicks after a while. <laughs> and then suddenly yeah. it's like, oh, I love drawing hands, or I hate drawing hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I probably feel more comfortable drawing a horse from memory than a person, because <laughs> I used to draw them so much. Oh, I find animals so much easier than drawing people. Yeah. <laughs> The hands and the fingers. Yeah, humans are weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why I'm, I do. I do. Sorry. Oh, this yeah. is not a surprise to you guys. <laughs> um, I I have the same book. I mean, that's. I've got like five copies of this baby. Um, reason for it. I was seven years old when I found this in the in the local library in the forbidden section, which is the grown-up section I wasn't supposed to come. Oh. Um, and I. I rented that thing every single week. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't. It was out of pub, um, out of stock. There was out of print everywhere until I found this copy. This is actually my very first copy, um, and I discovered mm -hmm. new pieces in it because people were just ripping out pages of that library book. Oh. So imagine <laughs> my surprise! They opened that up. It's like, oh, that's new art. <gasps> this was amazing. I love, oh, healthy, I, I love the healthy in that. Yeah, that's amazing. Really, really. 
the whole stuck in my thing mind. made me realize that this is a job. Somebody does this. Mm. And I was seven years old, and I grew up with uh, Green Poetry with its uh, gnomes, the book Gnomes, which is actually uh, older than the fairies by Brian Froud and Ellen Lee. Um, this book is actually based on gnomes by Green Poetry, and you probably know David, David the gnome. Um, so I grew up with that stuff, um, and this was my it clicked. I want to do this. So at seven years old. People were asking me, what, what are you going to do when you're older? I'm going to be an artist. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's so wonderful that 30 plus years, I don't even know. It's, like, it's more than 30 years. Oh, my, I'm old. Anyway, <laughs> more than 30 years later, I have my own book. And the people who made this book wrote my intro. And... I'm friends with them, which is it's mad. insane. It's mad. I mean, I I want to go. I want to pause this. I want to go back and just you know pat that little girl. Like, <laughs> hey, that's how we get older. So you know that's what shaped me. And it's um, like a full and circle. It is full circle, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> There's another yeah. circle. It's like a big spiral. It's, it's a big circle. It's very big, but it's it's so amazing to, you know, I never knew I I completely abandoned anything fairies and fantasy at, at art school, um, so it's wonderful to be back in this wonderful warm bath of of happy and yeah. weirdness and awesome. I so think we can Eight-legged horses or nine-legged <laughs> horses and dragons that spew fire and brimstone and witches that concoct how, magic. How could you not want to paint that stuff? Uh, there's people who could do not want that. I know. And they don't they think need they to get checked. <laughs> <laughs> they need to get checked. Um, <laughs> see, I had, a, I had a similar experience as well because one of the books that I used to pour over when I was a kid, remember the D and D books illustrated by Todd Lockwood? Yes. Mm -hmm. And there was like one called Dragonomicon, I think, and I borrowed that from the library so many times. And then now, Todd Lockwood has written the appraisal quote for the back of my book. Yay! <laughs> and I, that's <laughs> that was amazing. And I had Stephanie Lau who did all these tutorial books, like watercolor tutorials, and I remember learning so much from those books and she's now written the forward and it's just amazing how that sort of really? came around and I now know these people and friends with these people who I idolized as a kid so it's amazing cool I, I think that's it we got it yes because okay. actually we are already doing a little bit of overtime I don't want to end up Ooh. actually taking Yay, time away from fine. somebody else <laughs> yeah but it's a little lovely it's hearing you talk that. You know, we could do this forever and ever yeah. and ever. So thank you so much for, for being thank here you. in this virtual big space and doing this with me, humble moderator. <laughs> um, you really know, so we didn't get to uh, talk about your work because your yeah. work is really amazing. Yeah, so it's not beautiful. about me today. No, I don't even we'll, have, we'll have to reschedule something that will be about you at some point. Just me, yeah, just yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's been watching and who's been asking questions. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to all of them, but maybe we, uh, we can we can reply to them on Facebook or in the chat. Or yeah, I have we can always. So if, if any I'm of us have time, you know, no pressure. I know you're busy people. You have a lot of magic to do. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, Thanks for organizing yeah. it. Maybe we can do this again sometimes. Now that I know how, somewhat <laughs> know how. I'm I'm up for that. Haven't got anything else to do. <laughs> not gonna go anywhere. Anyway. No, we're not going anywhere either. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I will end this call. I will end this stream. And ah, uh, oh, like I'm out of words now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.